you're looking to dive into topics on how to live a happier, healthier, more fit, and long lifespan, then you've come to the right podcast. Living the dream with me, Coach Damian Evans. Together, we will explore the topics on all things health, fitness, and wellness. Together, we will be lifelong learners on this journey to living the ultimate dream. What up, Dream Team? Coach D here coming at you from beautiful, sunny San Diego, and welcome back to the Live in the Dream podcast, where we finish the week strong by covering how to properly fuel up our bodies based on what works best for us individually and in order to reach for our health, fitness, and wellness goals, and in order to live your dream life. And today, we're diving into the world of popular diets. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, man. We'll uncover the science behind those diets. We'll explore the diet's benefits and the drawbacks, and we will help you understand which might be the best fit for you and your health and your wellness goals. So grab a pen and grab a paper and let's get started. The human body is an incredibly adaptive system. When placed in a caloric deficit, it initially loses weight. Yes, But this progress eventually stalls. Evolution has designed our bodies to survive on less energy when necessary. That way we didn't starve. This led to adaptations like reduced thyroid function, decreased non-exercise activity, also called NEAT, and also lowering energy for training. This means what once was a calorie deficit now becomes the new baseline. To achieve long-term success in weight management, we need a dynamic approach to setting our calorie deficits. And in this episode, we're going to cover strategies for diet periodization, exploring both how micro cycles and macro cycles, and how to arrange the macronutrients to support our health and our body composition outcomes. So how can we change our diet styles over time in both the short term and the long term? And how can we arrange our carbs, proteins, and fats to support whatever body composition outcome that we want? Lose body fat, gain muscle mass, whatever the case may be. We're going to do a little bit of a a surface level dive and maybe later on we'll do a nice deep dive on each of these. I just want to make sure that we get all of these nutritional systems out there. So first, let's clarify some key terms. Nutritional systems. Nutrition systems, these define the macronutrient breakdown, carbs, proteins, fats, of calories per meal and when those macros should be consumed. It's the smallest unit of a diet dictating daily or individual meal composition. Nutrition systems. So it's a small unit of diet talking about either the daily or even all the way down to each meal composition. And then we have microcycles. Microcycles, these arrange calorie targets and nutrition systems over several days, up to a couple of weeks. So we have nutrition systems, which is like per meal or per day. We have microcycles, which is over a couple of days or up to a couple of weeks. For example, you can vary your total calories day by day in short cycles. And then we have macro cycles. These organize many micro cycles into weeks and months, adding complexity to build advanced nutrition programs. So if you ever were to go to a nutritionist, and I'm sure if there's any nutritionist listening to this, it's it's a little bit dumbed down, but this is kind of how they periodize or they do periodization with your diet. By understanding these levels, you can adapt your plan to get closer to whatever goals you have. Okay, so now that you understand nutrition systems, daily or meal, micro cycles, a couple of days worth of planning or a couple of weeks worth of planning, or my macro cycles, which is, which is uh, many mi- micro cycles put together into weeks or months, let's dive into some popular nutrition systems. Okay. The carb front-loading diet is number one. The carb front-loading diet. Most people respond best to a moderate carbohydrate diet, but the timing of carbs can make a difference. 
Recent research suggests that individual responses to carb timing may relate to our circadian timing or whatever chronotype we are. For early birds, if you're an early bird, consuming most of your carbs by lunchtime and having the last meal before 7 p.m., this is recommended for early birds. So you want to have your carbs, most of them, by lunchtime. You want to front load them and then have your last meal before 7 p.m. This approach helps align with your natural melatonin production, potentially reducing the risk of metabolic issues. Here's an example plan. Breakfast is at 7 a.m. You eat some whole grain toast with avocado and poached eggs. You have some Greek yogurt with mixed berries and a little drizzle of honey. That's 7 a.m., a nice diet of nice healthy carbohydrates, some fats in there. Um, you got a little bit of protein as well. A mid-morning snack around 10 a.m., you could have some uh, apple slices with almond butter or a fruit with some um, um, nut butter spread. And then around lunchtime, around noon, you could have a quinoa salad with chickpeas, cherry tomatoes, cucumber, and lemon tahini dressing with grilled chicken breast on top for lunch. A nice big salad with some protein on top. And then you could maybe have an afternoon snack around 3 p.m., some carrot sticks and some hummus. And then your last meal is before 7. You want to make sure that you're really done digesting your food around 7. So let's say dinner's at 6 p.m. You have some baked salmon with steamed broccoli and a side salad. So you could see that after your lunchtime, your carbs were really not there. You had a little bit of carbs from carrot sticks, but that's uh, wrapped up in fiber. And then with the steamed broccoli, the same thing, and that side salad, most of your carbs come from vegetables at that point. Some key tips for the front loading of this, um, this carb front loading diet is to aim to consume the majority of your carbs by lunchtime and to finish eating by seven to align with your circadian rhythm. Okay. So next number two, another diet is called time restricted feeding. This one's really popular right now. A lot of people call it intermittent fasting, but if we're going to be a little more technical, it's time restricted feeding, time restricted feeding which is a form of intermittent fasting, it involves consuming all of your daily calories within a very limited time window. The most popular one would be the 16-8 diet. So 16 hours out of the day, you're not eating, you're, you're quote unquote fasting, and that includes your sleep. And then eight hours of the day is where you're eating. You're reserving your window to an eight-hour window. I know some people that do six, some people that do four. There are some crazy people, maybe not crazy, it works for them, uh, some, some experts that I follow that only do a two hour eating window. They have like two big meals within that two hours. Studies show that the time restricted feeding diet can aid in fat loss and improve metabolic health without reducing your total calorie intake. This method can suit busy individuals or those who have circadian rhythm, uh, that, that favor eating later in the day. So if you do ha tend to eat later in the day, maybe you can get your time restricted feeding window to match when you need to eat. Now, when it says uh, calories aren't really a, a thing here, consuming all daily calories within an eating window and, um, and it can improve your health without reducing total calorie intake, what it really means is, is that you don't feel like you're reducing your calories, but because that time is shortened with throughout the day, you're spending less time eating and you're probably, you're probably dropping your calorie intake a little bit just because that window is, is less. So an example of time restricted feeding would be you're going to do your eating window in a 16, eight method. And let's say your, your eight hours of eating is between 12 PM noon and 8 PM. So 12 PM is your first meal of the day. It's lunch. You have a turkey and avocado wrap with whole grain tortilla. You have a side of mixed greens and balsamic vinaigrette on top of those mixed greens. So a nice little turkey wrap with a salad. 2 p.m., you could have a snack, a handful of mixed nuts. Just make sure you know it's not super salted and it's not a huge portion. And then at 4 p.m., you have another little snack. And maybe that's like a, a smoothie with spinach, banana, protein powder, almond milk. I have a nice big protein shake uh, in the middle of my day. 
And then at 6 p.m., you have a nice dinner. This dinner is grilled shrimp with quinoa and roasted vegetables. You have your protein, nice big protein, and then you have your your side of veggies and, and a little bit of carbs with your quinoa. And then at 8 p.m., you have your last quote unquote meal. Maybe it's a smaller snack at 8 p.m. And that's something like cottage cheese with pineapple chunks. Or um, you could have uh, blueberries and raspberries with dark chocolate and maybe a protein shake. So I like to make sure that you're getting protein in every meal. Um, but that's not really the point of, of this episode today. So time restricted eating window 16 to 8 is very common it doesn't have to be 16 to 8 it can be uh, usually eight's the biggest eating window you want to have if you're going to do time restricted feeding, but you can have shorter than that if you want. Stick to your eight hour eating window and ensure balanced meals. You want to make sure that you have balanced meals, carbs, proteins, and fats to keep your energy levels stable. So that's time restricted feeding. Number three, this one's super popular and also controversial, the ketogenic diet. We're not going to go too in depth on what the ketogenic diet is, but here's a little overview. The keto diet is a high fat, moderate protein, and a very low carb diet. So it minimizes carbohydrates. And this diet is aimed at achieving ketosis, where the body uses things called ketones from fat for fuel instead of blood sugar. So you're trying to remove blood sugar from your body and your diet, which is carbohydrates, so that your body can then run off this next energy system, which is triglycerides from fat, which can get turned into ketones and used as energy which is very simplified. I know if you're a keto uh, maniac, you're, you're probably screaming at me right now, but just for s- simplicity here, keto can be me- um, muscle sparing and it pairs very well with fasting, but it requires really careful management to avoid slipping out of ketosis, which is not super, um, it doesn't really do well with just like the average person that doesn't know a ton about nutrition. You really do have to kind of do your research and make sure you have a plan. Because as soon as you slip out of ketosis, then you're really not getting the benefits of what this diet is giving. Uh, It's great for some, but not for everyone, particularly those who struggle with the transition um, or just the need for carbs for your training. So if you're someone that does have high intensity training, this is probably not the diet for you, even though a lot of keto people will like scream at the top of their lungs that it's amazing for performance. Uh, It's just some people might not do well with the transition of not having carbohydrates for higher intensity training. So here's an example plan of the ketogenic diet. Breakfast looks something like this. Scrambled eggs cooked in butter with spinach and cheese. And then you can have coffee with some cream. Lunch would be like a Cobb salad with grilled chicken, avocado, bacon, blue cheese, and low carb dressing. So it's this big salad with lots of proteins, lots of fats, and very low carbohydrates. The only carbohydrates you're getting are from vegetables, and this is a very low amount. Afternoon snack might be some cheese cubes or a small handful of macadamia nuts. And then here it is, dinner. This is like the love of my life right here. We got ribeye steak. You got sauteed mushrooms, asparagus, all cooked in garlic butter. So it sounds great. Uh, the keto diet, you want to make sure that you keep carbs extremely low, typically under 20 to 50 grams per day in order to stay in ketosis, focus on high fat, moderate protein foods to stay in ketosis. Make sure that you're getting your protein amount. Uh, what we try to say is at least hundred grams of protein and, and hopefully up to your desired body weight and protein, which gets very challenging, uh, to be able to stay in your calorie limit when that's all you're eating. But with keto, with, with the keto diet, it does, uh, help you keep your, your calories down because carbs are so easy to overeat. So that's the keto diet. The next diet is the five, two cycle, the five, two cycle. So this is getting into multiple days. So this is moving from the nutrition systems into micro cycles. The five, two cycle alternates between five low calorie days and two maintenance calorie days. So instead of trying to hold yourself to a daily caloric goal, you're kind of undulating the way you do this here. You're kind of shocking the body in the way that it gets 
minimal calories on a few days, and then it goes up to maintenance calories, the amount of calories it takes for you to just maintain your weight, which takes some tracking and takes some trial and error, and it's not easy to find your maintenance calories. There are uh, calculators online that are, that'll get you in the general vicinity, but if you really want to be accurate, you really got to track for weeks, maybe even like a month to see like, what is my weight doing when I eat this amount of calories and, and blah, blah, blah. We've done, we've done episodes on that. But, um, so we got the five, two cycle alternates between five low calorie days and two maintenance calorie days, potentially offering, uh, physiological and psychological benefits while it can help to retain lean muscle and lose fat. It doesn't suit everyone equally. This cycle can fit well with people who have weekly schedules that are really dialed in but really need more flexibility on the weekends. So I've had clients where they do really well throughout the week and then it just, it goes off the rails on the weekends. This might be a, a solid diet for them to try because no, they're not eating in a huge calorie surplus on any of the days, but they're, they're eating less on the, on the weekdays where they probably work and they don't have to worry too much about food. And then on the weekends, they can have a slightly higher calorie amount in order for them to live the lifestyle that they want to live. An example plan here would be low calorie days. These are super low calorie days on for some people, not great to do over the long term. I will admit that, but I'm just re, I'm just kind of like doing the research on these diets and this is what they say. 500 to 800 calories a day for the low calorie days. Whoo, that is really, really low. You shouldn't do this for a long time. There are a lot of negative, negative things that can happen from doing this. Breakfast could be herbal tea and a boiled egg. Lunch could be mixed vegetable soup and broth. Dinner could be grilled fish with steamed broccoli. So like a very, very minimal day. You're getting your fats in. You're getting your vegetables in. There's no way you're getting your protein in with this amount of of calories, definitely maybe even put in like a protein shake if you can find a good uh, high quality protein with low calories, but it might take you over that low calorie day. So, you know, there's, there's trade-offs here. Uh, and then on your maintenance calorie days, you bring the calories up. Your maintenance calorie days, you'll have breakfast. Maybe it's um, uh, a egg scramble with berries and nuts on the side. Um, lunch could be a chicken stir fry with brown rice. Dinner could be spaghetti with meat sauce and a side salad. So you got like a nice little carbohydrate meal there at the end. So for this one, you're looking to follow that low calorie intake for five days per week and then eat normally but healthy for the remaining two days. This diet, on the other hand, some people find that that refeeding break on the weekends, it breaks up their momentum and it makes it hard for them to get back on track on Monday or whatever the case may be. So again, this microcycle might not be suitable for everyone. Okay, moving on. The very low carb diet. The very low carb diet. This diet includes some very low glycemic index carbs. So carbs that don't tend to spike the blood sugar very much. Stabilizing blood sugar and helping those with insulin resistance. It's high in protein to support muscle maintenance and satiety, your hunger signals. It's particularly useful for clients with metabolic syndrome or very high body fat. Simplifying their diet to lean protein, lots of veg veggies, and healthy fats. So the very low-carb diet is for people that really tend to have high body fat or that are struggling with the things like type 2 diabetes, uh, any of the things that come with metabolic syndrome. An example plan here for the very low-carb diet would be breakfast could be an omelet with cheese, mushrooms and bell peppers for lunch you'd have a grilled chicken salad uh no croutons and the dressing is very low carb and then an afternoon snack might be some celery sticks with some cream cheese and then for dinner you might have baked cod with sauteed green beans and a side of mixed greens so as you can see it's very high in protein it's very high in vegetables low glycemic index carbs this is going to help to, to keep that blood sugar a little more stable. It also keeps the calorie amount down, and it focuses on high-protein, low-carb vegetables, and it avoids starchy foods and sugars. So that's the very low-carb diet. With that, probably comes with a low-calorie diet, to be honest. Okay, next is instead of the very low-carb diet, it's just the low-carb diet. 
similar to the very low carb diet, but it allows more carbs. <laughs> so typically post training is when you want to eat these carbs to help manage your insulin and your cortisol levels. This diet is for those who need more carbs to be able to train effectively or just to manage stress. It's a very versatile option that fits many people's needs, especially those with emotional ties to certain foods. So if I had a client that struggles to eat very low carb because they feel like they're depriving themselves, the low carb diet might be the next best option for them. An example plan would be Greek yogurt for breakfast with berries and chia seeds. Lunch would be a beef stir fry with broccoli and bell peppers. An afternoon snack might be a small handful of almonds. And then dinner would be pork chops with cauliflower, mash, and a side salad. And then maybe after your training, you'd have a protein shake with uh, a fruit, uh, uh, maybe like a, a green banana, something that doesn't... Uh, Yellow bananas or brown bananas, they tend to be absorbed better. So uh, if you're looking to keep your glycemic index a little lower, a kind of cheat code for that would be to get as green of a banana as you can. Um, some people don't like green bananas, but that's just the way it is. So after training, protein shake with a banana. So for this diet, it allows some more carbs, more than the very low carb diet, especially around your training times. You really want to put that, the, the most of your carbohydrates that you're going to have after training. Um, and then maybe even a walk after you eat that. So to even help a little bit better with that glucose absorption and then keep your overall carb intake low to moderate. The next diet is the moderate carb diet. So you can see that we're starting low carb and then we're, we're slowly incorporating more carbs as we go down this list, the moderate carb diet, this system is ideal for any kind of recomp phases, recomp or body recomposition is trying to lose body fat and gain muscle mass at the same time. This is really better done for newbies when it comes to training, very overweight people or people that need to lose weight fast because of any type of like, um, uh, like medical issues. So it is good for recomp phases Well, or, um, even like some bodybuilders can do this. Okay. They, they're, they know their bodies well enough, but as you get more advanced, it's really hard to recomp. Uh, you, you, it, you should do better to, to focus on one phase at a time, whether it's, I want to make this next four week phase building muscle, and then I'll cut body fat, or I'm going to do a cut and then I'm going to build muscle afterwards. That second one's not quite as well done because building first is usually better and then cutting. Um, but most people want to lose body fat and gain muscle mass at the same time. You're kind of sitting in this middle ground by not committing to one, uh, where people aim to gain muscle and lose body fat simultaneously is called recomp. And it involves a balanced intake of carbs, proteins, and fats with higher glycemic carbs around your training windows. So whereas the low carb diet had low glycemic index carbs, carbs that don't spike your blood sugar as much, um, the moderate carb has higher glycemic index carbs than that low carb diet. And this is all around your training window. It's suitable for those who tolerate carbs really well and want to optimize their training and their recovery. So if you're someone that tries the low carb diet and it doesn't work for you because of your energy levels, you might want to have to bump it up to the moderate carb diet. This might have effect on how long it takes you to get to your goal, but it's a way for you to be able to stick consistently to a diet. And we all know that consistency is the way for you to get to your results the fastest, even if it does end up taking a little longer. An example plan for the moderate carb diet is for breakfast. You could have some whole grain oatmeal with banana slices and a dollop of almond butter lunch is chicken and vegetable wrap with whole grain tortilla an afternoon snack might be greek yogurt with honey and then dinner would be lean beef stir fry with brown rice and mixed vegetables so you're seeing these carbohydrates being inserted but you're also seeing a more well-balanced meal throughout uh, each of those meals so you're getting your proteins your carbs and your fats and then post training maybe some sort of protein shake or protein bar depending on the quality so for this one, balanced carbs, proteins, and fats at every meal is important and increase your carb intake around your workouts for energy and recovery. All right, moving on. Now we're working our way to the high carb diet, the high carb diet for very lean 
or car or carb tolerant people. So people that are lean or that can tolerate carbs. Well, this diet sources 40 to 60% of their calories from carbs, 40 to 60% of their calories from carbs, helping manage cortisol levels and fueling high energy lifestyles. It requires careful balancing to ensure adequate fat intake to maintain hormonal health. So this is kind of where I'm at right here, the high carb diet. I feel like this is the one where I sit the best. Um, I'm, I'm on the leaner side. I'm on the more active side. I definitely need carbs to be able to fuel for what I'm going to be doing there. So the high carb diet, here's a example plan. Breakfast would be a smoothie bowl with banana, berries, spinach, and granola for someone looking to lose body fat. You wouldn't want to really start your day with high carbohydrates, but for someone that is looking to more of gain some lean muscle mass when they're already cut down to a low body fat percentage, this is is a a better way to go. Maybe hit your carbs earlier in the day. Um, So you can see how nuanced nutrition is. Man, it's so nuanced. Lunch, a turkey and avocado sandwich on whole grain bread. I feel like myself, I'm 25% turkey. I eat so much of it. I love it. Um, So lunch, turkey, and avocado sandwich on whole grain bread. Afternoon snack might be some air popped popcorn. And dinner, salmon and quinoa and roasted sweet potatoes. So you got the sweet potato carbs in there, which is great. And then post-training snack. (laughs) Uh, A lot of the experts, they recommend, it's crazy, they recommend a good high-quality chocolate milk. Or a good high quality protein shake, of course. Now, this is going to be different for for someone that's looking to lose body fat, right? Someone that's looking to put on a little muscle mass, they can tolerate the carbohydrates with the protein and maybe a little bit of added sugar in there, even though you want to minimize as much added sugar as you can. So ensure that 40 to 60% of your calories come from carbs and then balance each of your meals with adequate protein and fat intake. Cool. All right. We got the carb backloading diet, the carb backloading diet. Carbs are consumed at the end of the day, completely opposite of the carb front loading diet. Uh, and this is going to be to help manage stress and improve your sleep. This approach is useful for clients with high stress levels or social obligations that make other diets difficult to follow. So a modified version includes carbs post-training, and right before bed. So this is someone that has a a schedule that's hectic. I've had a lot of nurses, doctors, um, firefighters, people that are just like, they cannot bring their food with them. Um, Some teachers that can't really eat throughout the day because they have the kids with them the whole time. So carb backloading diet might be a good plan for them. An example would be for breakfast, they have eggs with sauteed spinach and avocado, not many carbs. Lunch, they have grilled chicken salad with olive olive oil dressing, not many carbs. An afternoon snack, they have cottage cheese with a few nuts, still looking at proteins and fats. And then for dinner, they have baked salmon with a side of steamed broccoli. And then for their post-dinner snack, maybe a couple hours before bed, they have sweet potato fries or a bowl of oatmeal or something that's a little bit uh, higher in carbohydrates for their post-dinner snack. This one, you want to save most of your carbs for the evening, uh, which some experts do say that eating carbs right before bed does help with your sleep quality, even though some fat loss experts say that eating carbs right before bed is not great for fat loss. So nuance, nuance, and focus on proteins and fats only during the day. Then you have the next one, the low carb backloading diet, the low carb backloading diet. This is a variation of the carb backloading diet, but it restricts carbs to the last meal of the day using, uh, um, this is useful for those with metabolic syndrome who need carbs to sleep and have a crazy lifestyle that doesn't allow them to eat properly throughout the day. It focuses on high protein intake and healthy fats all throughout the day, and then helping manage overall health and body composition, uh, by getting those last meal of the day is the one that has the carbs. So an example, breakfast would be omelet with cheese and bell pepper. Lunch would be tuna salad with olive oil and mixed greens. Still looking at proteins and fats. Afternoon snack would be celery with peanut butter. And then dinner, you got your grilled steak with a side of roasted vegetables and post-dinner snack with your carbs right here. This is where you want your carbs, a small serving of brown rice or a piece of fruit or just, you know, a very small amount of carbs just before bed. The low carb backloading diet, restrict your carbs to the last meal of the day, make them a very low percentage of your diet and maintain high protein and healthy fats throughout the day. 
Sweet. All right, we got one more here before we close this up. The last diet I wanna talk about is the isocaloric diet. This system distributes calories evenly between proteins, carbs, and fats through all of the meals, making it very straightforward for general population people. It supports fat loss or muscle building with a balanced macro split and can be adjusted to fit training days for optimal results. This is where we should sit most of the time, an evenly distributed meal throughout the day, evenly distributing your protein, carbs, and fats through each meal. An example plan, whole grain toast with avocado and poached eggs for breakfast, for lunch, grilled chicken wrap with mixed vegetables, an afternoon snack could be some Greek yogurt with some honey drizzled on top, and dinner, baked fish with quinoa and steamed broccoli. The key tips here are to distribute your calories evenly between proteins, carbs, and fats, adjust your macros slightly on training days for optimal results. So in concluding this episode, understanding these popular diets and their applications can really help you create effective and adaptive nutrition plan for you and your goals. Remember the best diet is the one that fits your lifestyle and your goals while promoting your health that you can do consistently over time. None of these will work if you do not find consistency over time. Okay. And that is all for today. And until next time, stay fueled, stay fit and keep moving forward. And that's it, my friends. Thank you so much for joining me on this Fuel Up Friday episode of the Living the Dream podcast. Share the knowledge that you gain with your friends and family and hold each other accountable. If you enjoyed this content, it helps a ton if you could post on your social media stories a screenshot of this episode and include one takeaway that you learned. Make sure that you tag me and share your journey. Tag me at livingthedream underscore podcast or at coach Damien underscore SD and let us know how this episode benefited you. Let us know what we missed. Let us know what we got wrong. Tell us how you feel about any of these diets. We want to know. Message us if you have any suggestions or tips that would help your Living the Dream team that we can discuss on future episodes. I'll be right here with you working on making us stronger, happier, and healthier humans. Until next time, friends, keep living the dream.